All right, so I'm going to walk you through a couple things that we're doing, and then we'll just open it up for questions, and you guys can ask whatever uh, whatever you need of us. So, uh, Governor asked me to give you an update as to where we are in somewhat complicated process because right, right now we're still watching the Ohio River Valley and and that piece, as well as a couple spots in the eastern Panhandle. So we're still engaged with. With that piece of it, with the current weather front, we've still got liaison officers from the Guard in a couple of counties, particularly Marshall and Ohio County. Uh, that looks like it's going to stay within reasonable amounts for us to, to manage at the local level. We're uh, preparing for what we might get from Florence, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. and then. The Guard also has a national mission that we're supporting. We have opened up our air base at Martinsburg to a FEMA logistics support system. So our air base folks will be helping FEMA run logistics out of there. We've got a particular unit, Army Interagency Training Education Center, which is a unit that does critical infrastructure and force protection. And those folks are actually being assigned from the, that unit out through the National Guard Bureau to other states to serve as liaisons for those states for the national requirements that may come from the other National Guard organizations across the country through the EMAC system and, and otherwise. Uh, if you guys remember last year we had a couple of guardsmen from that unit that actually rode out that Cat 5 storm in the Virgin Islands and uh, provided communications back to, to get uh, support to the Virgin Islands as well as uh, some that rode out the, the Texas storm. So from the Florence uh, side of things, what the governor did today was to establish a state of preparedness. Uh, if you guys remember a couple years ago, the state changed our, we changed our statute to give us one more layer before a state of emergency. Uh, he did that for two primary reasons. One is to make sure that people in West Virginia start to pay a little bit more attention to the weather and where this thing is moving because it is, it's moving about every 15 minutes. Uh, so uh, where it's going to land on the East Coast and where it's going to hit us are right now uh, relatively un unknown at this point. Uh, the second piece was that allows him to authorize us to put pre-positioned assets from the National Guard into place. So uh, the latest thing we did as a result of that is he authorized uh, me to be able to bring in up to 50 National Guardsmen to start to pre-position in locations across the state. Our challenge with this is going to be it could run from the tip of the eastern panhandle all the way down to the coal field. So we've got to be a little creative in how we manage that. General Crane, who's uh, one of my deputies, is the, our joint task force commander and he'll be working with Jimmy and, and his team and the county level directors to identify how we manage that movement and, and flow uh, related to that. Uh, our distribution site at Rock Branch and Polka is, is up and running. Uh, there's been engagement with VOAD and VOAD is already preparing uh, the normal kits that we provide to individual citizens to do cleanup work that, uh, that may result from uh, the, the weather event itself. Uh, our Swiftwater Rescue Team that is partnered with Clendenin and Glasgow Volunteer Fire Departments has been put on alert and they're uh, prepared to, uh, to shift and adjust where, where we decide we may need them. Uh, the, the Civil Air Patrol now falls under the National Guard as of last year and, and we'll be engaged with those folks so when the, whatever weather event passes, whatever additional aviation assets that we need to, uh, uh, to do that reconnaissance piece will be out there. Our primary focus now will be making sure that we've got our communications in place with the local levels. We've got redundant communications and where we feel over the next couple of days the most likely course of movement is going to be then we'll 
make sure that we've got robust uh, LNO packages in those counties, which will allow us to have that on the ground. Hey, this is is what we need. So uh, I think what the governor wants us to focus on right now is to continuing to reinforce the folks that hey, we've got weather coming and we're already saturated uh, across the state. So it's incumbent upon all of our citizens to pay attention to what's going on and to do a little bit of preparation on their own and supplies and gasoline for generators and things that, uh, that they might need. Uh, folks with particular medical needs, we need to make sure that the, in advance of this that they're preparing for that and, and they're, they need to pay attention to what their local county emergency management folks are putting out to them and telling them because they're going to be the best conduit of information for them at the local level and are the best help for them you know, of any initial immediate needs that they've got. So that communications between the emergency management office here and those locals is going to be ongoing from this point forward until we get past this event. Uh, this will be the first event that we've run in our new combined operations center. So uh, now the National Guard and Homeland Security Emergency Management are functioning in one location. It's allowed us to be much more streamlined and to reduce numbers of staff we need in the operations center to allow us to put more people out into the field uh, where we need them. So. Uh, all that's going on under the state of preparedness and we're also continuing to work other day-to-day -day issues and deployments and uh, continuing to get rise contracts in place and all those things so uh, it's a pretty busy uh, time up here for emergency management and the, the National Guard so again I would ask uh, uh, you guys to reinforce that what the governor is asking us to do with this state of preparedness is uh, to let our citizens know that we've got to pay attention, we've got to watch where things are going, we've got to be a little bit more prepared, and we will keep everybody updated and be prepared to respond if necessary. So with that, I'll open it up to questions and see what we can, can help you guys answer. Questions. Um, are there any specific areas that, that you guys are going to be focusing on? I know you said Eastern Panhandle all the way down, but are there any specific areas that may be more at risk of? We'll probably, by late Thursday, we'll have a better idea of how we're going to shift an array forces as this thing tracks. Uh, and then we'll have to make another set of decisions once it hits landfall, because once it hits landfall, its chances of moving left or right, uh, primarily based on what you see from the models, is going to probably cut a little bit north. But once we get to that point, late Thursday, Friday, we'll have a better idea. Right now, what these guys are doing is being prepared to, to respond from the eastern panhandle all the way to the coal fields, and then we're looking at it in bands because if you look at it right now, you're, you're going to get from the eastern panhandle to the coal fields right along our eastern border, we're going to get a pretty good amount of rain. Then you go in another band and you're going to get a couple more, maybe up to six inches. When we get to the middle part of the state, we may only get an inch or two, but right now an inch or two in some of these areas is more than we can handle. So uh, I guess the answer to the question is right now we're trying to be prepared to be as flexible as we can to move forces once we get to Friday and see where we think this thing is, is really going to track. Must have done really good. Nobody's got any questions. We've seen a lot of major hurricanes here in the U.S. anyway in recent years and even months, but, but what, what stands out about Florence? What's the, the primary issue with Florence? Uh, well, uh, first, it's for the East Coast, I think it's the first time in, if you look back, a significant period of time where a Cat 4 uh, hurricane has actually made landfall. 
So that's probably the first thing. And then for us, from a West Virginia perspective, these ones that track the East Coast and move inland, and when they start slowing down, and we continue to get that circulation of rain, tend to cause us significant problems. I mean, you guys remember from Harvey, uh, or not Harvey, but uh, hit the East Coast, uh, we ended up getting five feet of snow. Uh, you know, and we had guardsmen going out doing pressure tests on school buildings to make sure it was safe to put kids back in schools because there was so much snow on the, the roof. So the, the, those that come from the East Coast tend to, to cause us a little bit more of a challenge here in West Virginia. All right, if you guys don't have any questions, uh, these guys, Nathan and uh, Folks will take you, if anybody wants to take a look at the new combined jock and uh, Jimmy or uh, Mike Todorovic can tell you a little bit about that and how it's functioning now a little bit better for us and uh, we will keep you guys up to date on things as they progress.